large crowds who are now traveling with Jesus. And he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the history of the Catholic Church, there have been many great saints who have had a great love and devotion for their own family members. And Almighty God has designed the family to be the first place that most of us learn about the life of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, about prayer, but above all, about what it is to be loved, and how to love your neighbour as yourself. It is no wonder that even non-Catholics and people with no religion take a great delight in their families and experience them as places of warmth, safety and mutual affection. But it is because family can be such a good thing, such a beautiful part of life, it is because of this that family can also be dangerous. What do I mean by that? Well, it's only really good things that people tend to worship or idolize or put before all else. And because the experience of family can be so life enriching, there is a danger that family life actually takes a prime position in life, coming even before God and his commandments. You know how it upsets me, annoys me even, when I hear at funerals some eulogy where the individual says, he always put his family first. In fact, I insist on reading eulogies <laughs> to make sure that this does not appear, because if the person put his family first, that person is most likely condemned. God must come first. Family is a wonderful gift from God, don't get me wrong. And it's God himself that commands us to honour our father and mother, and for parents to provide and protect their children. But these commandments are only binding to the extent that God always comes first. God is first. And when the family commitments pull us one way, but God's commandments pull us in the other direction, pleasing God and saving our own souls has to come first. That's why in the history of our Holy Church, there are also many great saints who have had to courageously oppose their families and even to cause their dear family members great distress and sadness in order to remain faithful to God or to reject sin. There's St. Philomena who displeased her father greatly when she would not agree to marry the Roman Emperor because she'd always, she had already promised to give herself entirely to Jesus Christ. And then there's St. Thomas More, who died for the Catholic faith only a few days after greatly upsetting his daughter Meg and his wife Alice, who visited him in prison and implored him with tears to accept King Henry, the evil man, the evil king, as the head of the Catholic Church. Then there's St. Faustina, who had to run away from home in the middle of the night in order to enter a convent which was against the will of her family. In today's Gospel, our Blessed Lord uses exaggerated language or hyperbole to get the point across that God always has to come first. He has to come first when the choice comes between pleasing family members and pleasing him. Sometimes, when you take this course of action, you might find your family saying to you, You hate us, Mum! You hate us, Dad! Of course, you don't really hate them at all. In fact, when you put God first, you have a correct love for your family because no created thing can ever demand that you break one of the Ten Commandments. No created thing should ever trump the voice of God himself. Probably, there are probably two, two key areas this, this rivalry can emerge. The most frequent, the most frequent time that God and family come up against each other 
is about keeping your weekly obligation to attend Holy Mass on Sunday. Maybe your sister is having a party over in Birmingham or your grandchildren want to treat you to a day out, I don't know, going to France for the day or something. Or you, you are having a non-Catholic family member staying over at your house for the weekend. In all these situations, it can feel difficult to insist that Holy Mass has to come first. To say, sorry grandchildren, you know, I, I, can't, I can't go to the day out in France unless I'm going to Holy Mass first. I, even, let's say, they've bought you the, the ferry ticket. You still have to remind them and insist. Missing Holy Mass breaks the covenant with Jesus Christ. It puts your soul in the state of mortal sin. And what a tragic thing it would be to go to hell for putting the family function first. Normally, with a bit of research or making a phone call or two, you might, you might well be able to manage to attend Holy Mass and also do the family activity. But if there's a conflict between the two, Holy Mass has to come first. That's a practical implication of our Lord's words in the Gospel today. So if you've fallen short in this area, make sure to bring it to confession before receiving Holy Communion. The second very practical area in which our Lord's words in the Gospel apply for our lives today is in the area of marriages and of attending the weddings or receptions after weddings of family members. I know this is a sensitive subject and a lot of emotions can be going on when you get an invite to a family wedding. But in these situations, above all, we have to be true to our faith and refuse to give any encouragement or support to weddings, so-called weddings, that are against the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ and his church. No matter how close the family member is, we are dealing with. I know this is a sensitive subject, and I'm sure it has touched some of you in the past, but if I'm to be a faithful priest, I need to make some points on this. That's because I want to make it to heaven. And I want you all to get there too. Marriage is a solemn covenant between a man and a woman for life. In which they become one person, one flesh, in order to raise a family and to be a sign of God's love to the world. For a baptised Catholic to validly get married, they actually need the permission of the Catholic Church. That is because this marriage covenant involves a third person, God, and through the authority of his church, God seals the marriage covenant that a Catholic enters into. This means that if a Catholic attempts to get married at either a registry office or a beach or in a church of some other religion, without first receiving the blessing of the Catholic Church through a letter, a dispensation signed by the local Catholic bishop, they aren't actually validly married in the eyes of God. They may be civilly married and have the papers to prove it, but in God's eyes, the relationship is not a marriage. It is two people living as if they were married. As we used to put it, two people living in sin. If you are invited to go along to such an event, you cannot attend it. No matter, and let's say you're even some distant cousin, distant cousin invited to the reception, you can't go. And really, you need to let the Catholic party know that what he or she is doing is not pleasing to God. So often, Catholics simply don't know this stuff. The teaching of the Catholic faith has been so poor the last 50 years, many Catholics don't even realise that a Catholic can only marry when they have permission to enter the marriage through the church. Because this is a covenant. This is a solemn covenant. 
and the church has to release an individual to enter into that special covenant with another individual. We cannot support or encourage our family members if they set out to begin lifestyles which are against God's teaching. I shouldn't even have to mention about same-sex relationships, celebrations, so-called marriages. I shouldn't even have to mention this. But I believe I do, because I am even hearing of, of Catholics going along to events in honour of so-called same-sex marriages. Okay, now we still need to love our family members. And of course, after the so-called wedding, if it still takes place, we still need to, we still probably need to be a big part of their lives. But this can only be done in a way that makes it clear that we don't agree with the way that they've chosen to live and that it's not pleasing to God. Now, if you are a Catholic who got married outside the church, civilly married, often it's often it's really simple to have your marriage made valid by the church, to have Jesus Christ transform your relationship into a holy covenant. A lot of people don't even know the church is teaching on marriage. Just come along to see myself or the parish priest and we can go through this with you and then help you to say your vows, even privately, so that you can then be mar married validly in the eyes of God. Or it may be, it may be that you're in a situation now that you are living as brother and sister with your civil married partner. And in which case, still come and speak to the priest about this and make a good confession of the attempts that you made to get married. Our commitment to God always has to come first. We love our families. Of course we love them, but we don't worship them. We don't put them before God because God is the creator and Lord of the family. And he wants our family to be a way of us getting closer to him and not an obstacle that stops us from pleasing him. Let it not be said of you at your funeral or some occasion, oh, that one always put, always put his family first, always put her family first in life. For Catholics, family doesn't come first. It cannot come first. If family is coming first, then you've stopped worshipping God and started worshipping man sometimes putting god first means suffering persecution from those we love you know i've experienced i've experienced it a little i'm sure many of you have experienced it a lot more than i have but always remember that in receiving any any persecution for the sake of the gospel you are winning great graces for those who persecute you for your loved ones and above all, you are proving yourself to be a true disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.